Namaskar. Uh, today we are here with a very interesting uh, theme topic uh, with a very interesting poet uh, for whom I have written on my uh, Facebook wall today. Uh, and I, uh, I call him a poet who is a friend of a tree. And uh, I have written about him that how we have gone to meet him with Odve Klive, my friend in Norway. And he has taken us to um, Sea Beach. And then he showed us his drawing room or his room where he received the guest. And then he showed his best friend a tree. So I was very much interested. We could talk for a few minutes, maybe half an hour or uh, at that time. But when I read his poetry, I find that, uh, because I, I knew about him that he is uh, a psychotic, uh, he is a poet, and uh, he is a nature lover and activist. Because I remember that uh, Helge um, Thorwin, uh, that you told us that you fought with the government uh, to save that piece of um, sea so shore. Is it true, Helge? Uh, what I uh, oh. did uh, was uh, more a local thing. It was not uh, the government and it was not uh, uh, exactly the, the oh. beach. That The beach has been... Uh, um, is a is a place where uh, people are not allowed to do any changes, but that's not my honor. Mm -hmm. I wrote a poem mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. save a certain um, allee, a, a, a place where a, a little road where there were beautiful trees on both sides, and they were going to cut those trees down, and then mm -hmm. I wrote a poem about that. Uh, I wanted to be able to uh, walk through that road and have the trees there and they changed the plants and uh, the trees uh, got to, uh, to live so, so your po uh, poetry helped you yes to uh, yeah so uh, okay uh, so maybe i didn't understand at that time but uh, it seems that your poetry helped to save that uh, yes uh, that uh, so that uh, this is a beautiful a thing that how can a poetry works as a, a, a what as a, a one activist should work yeah. um, i want to talk about uh, helge because i have translated his whole book and uh, um, while translating his book i find that there are two kind of poets who talk about the um, nature so sometime when you talk about nature you are uh, separate from the nature you are just expressing the nature you are just talking about nature the beauty of nature but helge's poems are different as he becomes the part of nature that was a very very beautiful thing second thing the fineness of in hindi we call it the softness or we can get a resham the silk the silkness of uh, nature uh, comes in your poetry. It becomes very, very silky. In Hindi, we say that Reshmiyat hai. Isme kavita mein Reshmiyat hai, Resham ki jesi, isme komalta hai. That thing I find in your poetry. And um, it was uh, challenging. Your translation of your poetry was not simple for me because I remember that every day I was writing you mail that why did you write and how did you, how did you write. Though I have visited Norway and I thought that and uh, Odwe uh, has sent me whole Norway uh, and she was she is a wonderful uh, host. Um, and I thought that uh, I, I know a lot about uh, this nature. But when I read your poetry, um, the shades of nature were very, very prominent. And uh, then I was writing letters to you uh, and you were replying. And sometimes you were sending the pictures. 
that was very interesting that uh, what kind this uh, beauty looks like yes. so so i want to uh, now i stop talking you please tell me tell us that uh, why uh, one thing how your um, you as a psychedelic uh, is helpful to poetry how you see the poetry as a psychedelic because you said that you have worked on the poetry therapy and you have written a lot on the poetry therapy so how it helped and second thing we i will ask that why you are so involved in nature so first you go for your first question yes uh, it's a it's a strange and long story uh, because in the beginning i thought that it was very important to to for me to Uh, be a poet when I was a poet and be a psychologist when I was a psychologist and not mix those. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, then I started to work uh, both with uh, translating old uh, North American uh, natives uh, songs where they were making poetry that was supposed to heal, uh, to calm down people. And uh, then I started to get very interested in um, in the hypnotherapy. And when I read the history of hypnotherapy, then I came far back in time. And the history of hypnotherapy fell together with the history of poetry. And then I understood that I am working with the same thing when I am a psychologist and when I'm a poet. I'm working with how language can affect other people, how you can express yourself in a way that people can receive it with their heart and their soul and it can make changes. So it was very important for me to find out this because I came, I became one person, <laughs> not a poet and a psychologist, but I was the same person, whatever I was doing. So uh, then I started to use poetry in when I had clients, uh, not very much, but uh, when it turned out to be a natural thing when I heard that the client was writing uh, I asked them to bring along things that they had written and then we were writing things together and uh, it was very interesting to see how it could affect their situation it's a very interesting that uh, um, you were uh, using this poetry therapy Uh, I just uh, uh, want to tell that uh, recently, but it took uh, four or five years for me to write this book and I don't have any experience of uh, um, uh, medicine, a medical, uh, medical uh, field. So, uh, yeah, but I have written a poetry therapy and my poetry therapy also starts with the, uh, I, uh, I, as I told you previously that uh, Uh, in our ancient bo books, most ancient books, we find that poetry and uh, medical or the uh, the treatment are quite mixed with each yes. other because yes. uh, uh, people thought that these are the prayers or uh, for the or the hymns for the uh, treatment. But uh, I find that when you read them, you find that they are not giving the medicine uh, in, in, or they are not talking about any medicine they are just communicating with the diseases communicating with the trees communicating oushad means uh, that uh, medicines and communicating with the patient so and the same thing happened to me when i came to know about the african and uh, native americans that they were also using such things and shamnam also as you um, use that alabama your book alabama So the shamnam thing was uh, also there in, in India, uh, in a different way. Uh, yeah. so, so this is very interesting. But 
though we knew each other but we were working a uh, different direction and my direction uh, is quite little different but uh, i'm really very uh, interested uh, that uh, about your experience about the poetry therapy in your as a doctor now uh, the second thing in your poetry is the nature and nature is uh, because as a outsider when i came to norway i have written like that that it is like a big canvas because we when we live in a crowded place we our sky is limited we can't see more sky because it is uh, polluted or it is crowded with many things so the the whole sky is seen in your country the beautiful country uh, so uh, but your poetry is not that much you're not just experiencing uh, nature you are uh, involving or you are I say that you are philosophically spiritually experience uh, you are um, it's spiritually enter in the nature so yes. how come that happens and how did you start writing poetry uh, about the nature um you know i was uh, studying uh, psychology in uh, the capital of norway far away from here a big city or a little city if you consider indian cities but uh, it's uh, the biggest city in, in norway and uh, and uh, then after i had um, finished my studies i returned home to this landscape where i was born and as you say here is a very very much uh, sky it's a high sky over the landscape and uh, perhaps uh, the light here is very special it has been attracting very many painters and uh, i don't know if you know my most famous little poem that is very short uh, it goes like this the light you need exists yeah <laughs> perhaps uh, the light here in this landscape uh, is uh, a part of uh, helping me to write exactly that but no nature to me I feel that I am a part of nature. I am communicating with nature. I I'm interested in as you were talking about the old ways of uh, communicating uh, how the medicine was uh, combined with nature in a much uh, stronger degree and uh, I was very fascinated uh, when I just some days ago found out that the first alphabet that was made in Europe uh, in a, a Celtic alphabet, every single letter was combined with a tree. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. very, very Celtic, yeah. That's, so uh, that's uh, the every <laughs> a single letter is combined with the tree. That was actually from a uh, uh, very uh, means uh, from ancient time. Yes, the people yes. have uh, uh, created the word. Is it uh, because uh, Norway uh, is a country which is uh, uh, always uh, at least six months in a year is under the ice? So nature is so important. Is it so? <laughs> you know where I am living. There is hardly any snow at all because the warmth of the Gulf Stream is coming up here and uh, keeping the it's eleven degrees all year around. So it's eleven de degrees now and it's eleven degrees uh, at midsummer. <laughs> so it's not not under not that not that problem. <laughs> no, no, I I don't think. Uh, not every Norwegian poet is uh, necessarily interested in 
nature. And, and you have been talking about things that is important concerning my poetry. It's, it's a spiritual thing for me. It's a connection with the, with the creative power in nature. Uh, a feeling of being uh, a part of something and uh, and uh, yes uh, i have been uh, meditating very much in a buddhist uh, tradition also in an indian tradition and uh, i think this these things uh, have been strengthening uh, my feelings towards nature so perhaps not so norwegian at all but perhaps a little bit indian and uh, yes yeah. Yeah, you know, why, I, uh, why i said that uh, because uh, i belong to rajasthan and you know that rajasthan is a desert and you find that in desert where when in my childhood so much scarcity of water uh, uh, hardly in some places you hardly see the trees uh, like Bikaner and other Jesselman areas um, and sand dunes, sand over there. But you see the clothing of those people as colorful, colorful clothing, uh, very dark, and as if they become nature. They wanted to become tree themselves. If trees are not there, so they are trees there. And uh, it's very, very interesting when we go back and see that why they were so colorful. Because they wanted to bring uh, some color in their land. Um, and uh, uh, in my childhood, there was so much scarcity of water. Uh, so it was... Uh, um, uh, and But when I came to Kerala, which was full of nature, their dress code is white. Not now, those days. Mm -hmm. That was only off white, not white even off white. The yes. dress code was off white and very simple. I'm not talking about the modern days, contemporary no. days, but those days. So I thought that they have plenty of nature. That is why they want to um, uh, bring the uh, like Roshni, what you say, as you say, the light in their life. Because they're very long, we had when I came here, a very tall coconut tree. That sometimes you don't find uh, uh, the light in daytime, and then when it rains, right, it rains, it became dark in daytime. So uh, now we have a spoiled uh, the country. So that is why I thought that uh, we bring what we don't have. The man is very intelligent. Uh, the human is very intelligent animal. So who he knows that how to contrast, how to <laughs> balance. That is why I ask you. Yeah. So uh, I want to uh, because you know that I was when I was translating your poem. Uh, though your first poem is uh, about your father, I like every poem because I wanted to read each and every poem of you. But I was extremely, extremely. Uh, um, uh, uh, stop, um, is, is this what you, I say that I was uh, I was astonished to see that you have written the poems for from the hospital uh, and those poems have too much nature uh, uh, this uh, this is uh, actually when it is written when you are in a university hospital in Stangar and which poem, a full whole poem, I will not read, but I will read one line in that. In Hindi, it says, Mere bhai ne ek chidiya, ek pahad, aur ek suraj cancer vibhag ke bahar rakh diya. Means it is like this, my brother has kept one, one bird, one, uh, one mountain, and one sun uh, uh, outside of the cancer department. This was so fantastic. So fantastic that uh, <laughs> entering in the hospital, you are thinking of a bird, you are thinking of a tree, and uh, this is um, um, uh, uh, this mount mountain and sun. So, let me explain. Yeah, it was astonishing for me, it was very surprising when I came out of the taxi and I was going in to get this uh, uh, therapy for can cancer. And outside the door of the hospital, 
there is a sculpture that my brother has made with a bird, with a sun, oh. and with a mountain. Oh, <laughs> so, so he, I, he knows I that. I was very, very touched and empowered by this, that he was meeting me there. Sadly, he passed away one year ago. Oh. Uh, yes. Thanks. But uh, but then there he was uh, helping me. Uh, shall we read a second this night song from this poem? Uh, yes. uh, uh, and uh, if you like, I can read in Hindi first because yes. uh, there are yes. um, some audience who uh, yes. know yes. Hindi, and then for class, uh, I think. We can read uh, in um, English. We are reading in English also, or English and Norwegian. So, I, I, uh, shall I read? Okay. Yes, I am not. Uh -huh. uh, I have not uh, prepared to write in English. So, okay, no problem. You read in your language. I am reading in Hindi. Okay, fine. fine. So, second poem uh, is this from this series. Uh, that are night songs too. Adi raat tak Rentborg ke liye taxi bulane wale boodhe par raat ki shift wali nurse jhuki hui hai. Uski deh bhaasha kare rahi hai shant raho, adhir mat ho. Mein un dono ki aawaz ko band kar deta hoon. Dousri satah par London Badge dal ke geet ko khol leta hoon. Jo hile vaha ke roop mein gaane lagta hai. पूर्ण चंद्र खिड़की दर खिड़की वसंत की खुशबुओं से गुजरता हुआ चल रहा है रात भर न चांद ने आंख नीची न मैंने समूह गीत शांत हो गया कीत रिचर्ड के होमी अकास्टिक गिटार की जगह अलकू पर ले लेता है फ्रेंच हॉर्न माइक जागर मेरे कानों में स्वयं चला आता है वह रिसेप्शन में दिखा और उसके हाथ में वाइन का गिलास था मानो कह रहा है कि मैंने सिर हिलाकर उसका हाथ मैं और मानो कुछ कह रहा है मैं सिर हिलाकर उसका हाथ थाम लेता हूं उसकी बड़ी संगीत गोष्ठी में पहुंचने से पहले हिलवाह हिल के गंभीर हिलवाह में गंभीर ध्वनि छठी मंजिल तक फैल जाती है इस परिदृश्य बसंत की हरियाली में गीत गाने लगते हैं शहर के लोग सो रहे हैं जल्दी ही वे नाश्ता करें हैं कितना अच्छा है सोना उठना खाना लेकिन मैं पूर्ण चंद्र को निहारता लेटा हूँ आधे चढ़े कांस से लोगों की परछाई घूमते देखता हूँ उसके जाम में खून से लथपथ आदमी था सुबह उसी के करीब पहुंचती है जो इंतजार करता है दिस इज फैंटास्टिक लाइन सुबह उसी के करीब पहुंचती है जो इंतजार करता है सो विल यू रीड इन नॉर्वेजियन लैंग्वेज लव टू लेन दिस Thank you. Very nice to hear. It's, even though I don't understand, it's very. <laughs> it's your poem. It's your poem. Nattsöster står böjt över den gamle som har ropat efter taxi till Rannaberg halva natt. Hennes kroppsspråk, tålmod och omsorg är kopplat ut lyden av dessa två. Kopplar in. London Bach choir som sing hillevåg upp i en annan dimension. Fullmånen beveger sig från vindauge till vindauge genom vårnattas anglar. Varken månen eller äg luckar augo hele natta. Kore forstummar och Keith Richard tek over. Den heimekjære klangen av akustisk gitar ligg under Al Cooper, sine varsame toner på fransk hår. Mick Jagger kom helt fram til øyra mitt og er personlig. Han har sett henne nede ved resepsjonen, sier han. Hun har deg et glas vin i handa. Han sier det slik det er. You can't always get what you want. Jeg nikker. Og tek han i handa. Før han dreg av gave til en demonstrasjon av veldig musikalsk kraft. Hillevåg svever høyt utenfor sjette etasje. 
och syng sitt landskap upp i det spirande gröna vårblå. Folk sör och snart äter i frukost och det är gott att någon sör och vaknar och äter. Jag lik månevaken och ser skyggarna av människor som rör sig på korridoren. In her glass was a bleeding man. Morgonen käm till den som väntar och Hillevåg svävar ut och var fjol. I, I like uh, one thing in this uh, poem that you are you were in the hospital, you were surrounded by the pains and at that time you're not talking about your pain, you're not talking about anything which uh, uh, which uh, of fear or uh, anything else but you are just looking you are listening music and you are talking uh, looking at the moon from your window which is half closed window and uh, you know that you have to wait whatever happened and that life will come if you wait so that this poem gives a very good um, uh, uh, one one very good uh, example also and one very good thing that what you have to do to uh, survive and how you have to do we are doing almost same thing in this pandemic time because yes. uh, we are we are doing same thing because yes. we are just waiting 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 and looking out the yes. mm, uh, and uh, i it's, hope uh, it's interesting uh, um, I can take tell you just a little uh, that I I was I was laying in this room I was looking out at the nature the world and I was listening to music and I decided that I would like to write poems that included all these dimensions and I think I did yes and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it's also interesting just what you are, are, are talking about, that it's very actual. Um, the poem is very, it, it doesn't feel old. And, uh, and uh, it also connects very well to what we were talking about. Uh, because poetry therapy, it doesn't have to be a client. Uh, it can be the poet that gets the therapy when he writes. Yeah, here we got one uh, person, they say Dinesh Atri, after he, uh, I think he, he said that I am also in a hospital right now, I think, in a, uh, and uh, he is in some, uh, from hospital itself, he entered in this, um, this program. Yeah. Uh, I see, so, I see. <laughs> so, uh, yes, at, I got uh, Atri, Dinesh Atri, so best wishes uh, Dinesh Atri ji, from both of us. Yeah, me too. So he, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, I, I got a, a message uh, from uh, Iceland uh, uh, that um, one person uh, who had um, been getting treatment for cancer had uh, had my very last uh, book of poems with her in the hospital and it had been to a great comfort and, and uh, help to get through things. Yeah, I think this is last poem is the uh, fourth one, no? Yes. Night, huh? Yeah, this is actually very, very powerful and very full of uh, emotions. Yes. Do you read first or I read first yes, in Hindi? I can read first this time. Yes, please. So this, this one connects to a special song uh, by Leonard Cohen called Love Itself. Lisa. Kom in genom vindauge med morgonen i fang. Och ha ett fang och vära i. Och vära orlaust där när natta sig ned i havet och in i fjällen. Och känna vära famna en och lytta till en välkänt röst som syng om ord och icke ord. Den 
I came back from where I'd been. My room, it looked the same, but there was nothing left between the nameless and the name. Og slå augu opp og ha glemt alt som skjedde siden en dukka deg, kjennest som en glemt lykke. Får jeg gli inn i det døsige lyset der ingen spør og ingen svarer. Jeg stirrer på seks etasjer med luft og sverer ut på sjette etasje i djupe toner av bass og piano og er helt nær og avslørt røyst som prøver å si litt meg. Det er ikke meg. Alt mellom det navnlause og mitt navn. Thank you. So I read in Hindi. This is the fourth song from the hospital. And I think by this time he has come out of the hospital. And he has written for the Leonard Cohen mentioning his poem. Uh, only the love is it the poem's name is only love isn't it Helge? Uh, it's a it's a song uh, and, and song it's love uh, uh. itself love itself love itself song uske liye inhone likha hai to khidki se roshni subah ko god mein baithai chali aa rahi hai ek god ka hona aur ek god mein hona aur nishabd hona जैसे ही रात के नीचे समंदर में पहाड़ों में डूबने लगे यह महसूस करना कि दुनिया तुम्हें उठाए हुए है और सुनना जानी पहचानी गाती हुई आवाज को शब्द और शब्दहीनता के बारे में फिर मैं लौट आऊंगा जहां मैं था मेरा कमरा वैसा ही है जैसा पहले था लेकिन नाम रहित नामधारी के बीच कुछ और नहीं बचा है ये शायद उस संगीत की आवाज है उस, उसकी टुकड़े हैं अपनी आंखें खोलने और भूल जाने के लिए उनके बंद होने और खुलने के बीच क्या क्या घटित हुआ भूले बिसरे आनंद का अनुभव क्या है मैं ऊंगती रोशनी में तैर सकता हूँ जहां कोई सवाल जवाब करने वाला नहीं है मैं हवा की छठी मंजिल को घूरता हूँ मैं छठी मंजिल में बैस और पियानो की ध्वनि में घूम आने के लिए गहरी कोमल और नग्न आवाज कुछ कहने की कोशिश कर रही है मेरे नाम और बेनाम के नाम अब कुछ ज्यादा बचा नहीं तो ब्यूटीफुल वेरी ब्यूटीफुल इट्स वेरी वेरी ब्यूटीफुल बिकॉज इट इज एक्चुअली दैट्स व्हाट आई वाज डिस्कसिंग विद समवन दैट वी राइट नेचर पोइट्री एज नेचर इज समथिंग डिफरेंट or when you bring the music as music is something different in your poetry nature and music because i think you can sing also <laughs> because your poetry nature and music is so uh, woven to each other that we do not understand that where is nature where is poetry and where is uh, 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 music no, so, let me let me uh, let me put it this way Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have written very many lyrics uh, for songs, uh, poetry mm -hmm. that has been sung. I, I, I don't sing them mm -hmm. myself very much. But, but if we consider it's the language, it comes out of us. And we come, in a way, out of nature. Uh, Wherever human beings have been living, they have, in a way that nobody really understands why, they start to make music, they start to sing. We don't know why. Charles Darwin didn't understand why. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's <laughs> an enigma. It's a, it's a very interesting question. There's a, there's a, there's a force that wants to create mm. sounds, very many 
living things are making sounds to communicate with each other. Uh, even termites and ants and uh, you know, so it's it's it, the whole the whole world is full of sounds that are communicating. The whole world is singing. Whales are singing. Trees are singing. Birds are singing. We are making poetry. So it is the same. Beautiful. And we've forgotten to listen the music of uh, uh, nature. Uh, we've forgotten to listen uh, the music of birds, trees, leaves. Uh, we have forgotten because what we feel that we bring uh, the nature or uh, in a flower pot and keep in our drawing room and we change them into convert them in a in a lifeless things so uh, that we have forgotten so going back to nature i remember that uh, when um, i was in china and uh, uh, you know that now uh, still now, now those uh, artists painters uh, they follow the traditional taos in their uh, art so i was there in a residency and uh, he told me uh, that uh, um, it, uh, uh, i was just because it is you know that it is very difficult to uh, discuss or uh, talk to them because they do not know english at all when they are inside the china because on next generation only knowing this language so I wanted to know the Chinese painting and all. And with uh, translation, he, uh, he says that our traditional painting is not going to nature and copying it. We never copy a, uh, traditionally, we never copy a nature on the canvas. Our traditional painting is that go to nature, absorb it. And then you come to home. And sleep over it, forget it, and then you paint. That will be your nature. So the absorbing nature and then bringing on the canvas is a very very different style of uh, painting. Yeah. Same way that uh, poetry also we have forgotten that. Nature poetry, poetry does not mean that talk about nature. Nature, because nature knows how to talk. Who we are to talk about nature. They can talk, they can sing. Good. Only thing, yeah, we have to communicate with them. Yes. I love your one poem uh, uh, because it is talking about the poetry. And uh, I have to find out. After the Bernard, this poem was there. What is the? That mm. you, know, you know that after Bernard, this poem yes, is there. Yes, yes. Uh, mm. It's um, called uh, um, the poem that draws darkness to itself. But I Can you read? Huh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> please read. I will read in Hindi. Okay. Please you read. Yes. Can you sing a little bit? Uh huh. No. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dikte. Ah, okay. Dikte sig til seg mørke. Jeg legg dette dikte ned i en spesiallaga etui av mørkt tre, fora med grøn fløyel. Jeg lukker det polerte lokket over dikte og knepper den vesle haspelåsen på plass. Jeg løfter dikte i handtak og bærer det med meg i høyre hand. Ut i septembersola og den stille dagen som legger en musikalsk hinne over vattnet. Som spegler de grøne og røde treer borte knausene der elva gjør en sving. Jeg kjenner en svolt etter musikk som går rett i kroppen og jeg bærer dikte med meg. Til en stad der jeg opplever en magisk kraft fra alt brunt og grønt og blankt som vekst. 
och renn och speglar himlen och lavträa en stad mellan vattnet och skogen av grenarna finns det rösle som bara alvarna kan laga och jag ser dikte ner här och jag öppnar ett öje och frier med varsamma händer dikte på flöjlen och stillar det upp på elvebredda och lägg mig ner i graset och ser det stå med dessa vackra stråar med rörslena av vatten bak sig och den plötsliga plogen av jäser högt där uppe. Och jag lär dikte stå här medan det skumrar kring oss. Och jag lär dikte stå att där när jag går lär det stå i nattestilla medan patt sitter och lyttar och dogga fyller graset och graset reiser sig där jag har läge och dikte syg till sig mörker och fukt och jag vet det står där med en morgongry stig över den dansande disen där alvarna svingar sig vasslet genom mellomlandet av nattlys och morgonmörker och jag väntar till dikte är fullt av den stigande sola och dirrar som är i luftspeglet. Thank you very much. The every language has its own beauty. Uh, yes. When you are reading in your language, though I don't understand any word, but you know that the sound, no? that is very interesting for me because every sound is actually the pushing. I feel as if you are pushing one word with another um, rhythm so there is a music and a word yeah. both together in your uh, poem yeah. <laughs> your language it's beautiful so, that, <laughs> must be, that must be my song yeah <laughs> no but somebody is saying that yes please sing so people are uh, want to can you sing a little bit something no, no <laughs> I uh, okay so um uh, I like this poem because uh, this is uh, uh, about the poet. I like all the poems, but why I'm reading this poem? Because this poem is talking about the poetry, what poetry does. That uh, uh, so, we said carefully. Please listen to it. ध्यान से सुनिए ये कविता अंधेरे को चूसती है. इसका ये शीर्षक है. यह कविता अंधेरे को चूसती है. मैं हरे मखमली पी, पीते से सजे खास तौर से बनाए लकड़ी के डिब्बे में इस कविता को सजाकर रख देता और पॉलिश किया हुआ ढक्कन लगा देता हूँ फिर बक्सुए को खट से बंद करके अपनी दाहिनी हाथ से कुंडी पकड़कर उठा लेता हूँ अब यह सितंबर की धूप में बाहर है जिसका मौन जल पर संगीत मय परत की तरह तैर रहा है उस पर हरे और लाल दरख्त प्रतिबिंबित हो रहे हैं गोलशिला के करीब जहाँ की नदी मूर्ती है मुझे महसूस होता है कि मेरी देह में संगीत की भूख जन्म ले रही है मैं अपनी कविता को उस जगह पर ले चलता हूँ जहाँ भूरी हरी चमकीली वनस्पतियों आसमान और पत्तियों को एक साथ प्रतिबिंबित करते जल की चमक जल का चमत्कारी आकर्षण है जहा जल और टहनियों की हिलती पहाड़ परछाइया है जिनका निर्माण केवल अपसराओं द्वारा संभव हो सकता है मैं कविता को यहाँ रख देता हूँ खोले से मखमली फीते में सजे डिब्बे को खोलता हूँ कविता को उठाकर नदी के तट पर रख देता हूँ और मैं खुद पीठ के बल पर लेट जाता हूँ लंबी खूबसूरत घासों की पत्तियों के बीच चली आती हुई हंसनियों के चले आने और पश्चाताल में पश्चातल में बहते जल को निहारता हूँ कविता को यही रहने देता हूँ क्योंकि हमारे आसपास अंधकार गहरा रहा है अब मैं यहाँ से दूर जाऊंगा तब भी कविता यही रहेगी मेंढक सुनेंगे इसको रात भर और ओस की बूंदे खास पर फैल जाएंगे जहाँ मेरी देह पसरी थी कविता अंधेरे और नमी को चूसने लगेगी मैं जानता हूँ कि ये तब तक खड़ी रहेगी जब तक ओस की बूंदों पर नाचती भोर उगेगी बाहर रहित अपसराए रात भर भोर के मटमेले उजाले की तरह जल पर तैरती रहेंगी 
मैं इंतजार करूंगा जब तक कि कविता उगते सूरज से भर ना जाए कविता मृग मरीचा की तरह मरीचिका की तरह कंपाए माने कितनी खूबसूरत ब्यूटीफुल पोइट्री इट्स ब्यूटीफुल पोएम दैट पोएम इज सो सॉफ्ट योर यू आर ब्रिंगिंग इट एंड 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 द ब्यूटी ऑफ दिस पोएट्री इज दैट इमेजेस आर वेरी क्लियर you are walking with the poetry you are walking with the poetry you are taking you are listening you are enjoying but you are leaving it there so that other creature especially frogs and other snake will also enjoy and that it grows so now you get rid of that poetry you are it does not belong to you but you have enjoyed while creating it mm. so this is what uh, i i never read such poem for creation of poetry such a no. soft rhythmic beautiful silken poem and which is <laughs> which is natural also yes please and it's yeah. interesting uh, for me to think that i sit i sit here and smile about the surprises mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. life uh, gives because mm-hmm. once yes i wrote this poem in norwegian and then uh, when i met you in the sand dunes by the beach uh, i had no idea that one day uh, this poem would be in hindi and uh, again i had no idea that i would one day sit here and listen to you read it loud uh, like this it's uh, it's quite astonishing the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much i will read your all the poem and send you uh, a hindi Uh, part in a youtube i will read a whole book and send you so that you can also <laughs> enjoy it <laughs> or keep in your uh, youtube so um uh, it's a beautiful now do you want to say something else or we go for another poem or you please say something about your experience no i think uh, you are right in uh, saying that just this poem is uh, special it's different and uh, and uh, sometimes uh, when i write uh, poems they surprise me uh, uh, i write something that i didn't know that i was going to write and i read it and i think wow <laughs> this is very <laughs> strange very strange how how i can put the poem into this uh, little uh, place where it is kept and carry it with me out in nature and where it can be standing and draw this darkness to it it's uh, it's uh, it's very open it's very it's telling something as you said about poetry how it again is a part of nature a part of me and and how you when when we write poems we give them away yeah that is the last thing that you leave there and you give with them away so mm. that is the last thing so uh, i i uh, another thing uh, yes this are uh, you remember that i find very difficulty in translating these poems because i have to enter in this atmosphere and i my, my personality is little different because uh, not very emotional a uh, little bit uh, maybe the ego is too maybe thoughtful so uh, it was difficult for me to melt in these poems but when i started reading your poetry i really get melt on those poet poems that is the power of those poetry and i think yes. that power you are using with your patients yes uh, i am um, also feel that when i have been translating poetry uh, from uh, english and american poets uh, you get very much closer to the poems you you get into them in a different way you have to find out where it is uh, moving and where it is uh, uh, living and and so so uh, i think what you have experienced there it's not just uh, something with my poems but it's it has also to do with the what we have to do when we translate we have we we, we get much closer to the poem 
Yeah, I like translation be, uh, because, uh, because of this reason. Because I know my limitation. I cannot mm. write all kind of poetry. Uh, mm. So uh, there are very, very experimental uh, poets who are very, um, do many, many experiments. So when I translate them, I feel that how one person can, uh, one poet can uh, uh, do experiments with many things, very ordinary things. When I translate your poetry, I feel that how poetry can be softer. So I always love to translate uh, because translation is not so easy because you have to enter in that poetry. You have to. So while translating your poetry, I have to, what we say that we make a bread, no? So we have to uh, mold our wheat powder uh, very nicely. We have to make it dough. And making dough in my time, my mother used to say it, you take 20 minutes and also it becomes very soft. Gluten become now in a in a scientific way they said that gluten become active active and then only the 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 bread become very soft. So it is like this when I was translating your poetry, I had to become very soft. I have to make myself very soft to enter it to absorb those poems. Yeah, so. It was very interesting, very uh, very nice for me. I learned, I learned a lot. Um, you know, somebody is asking one of, of our friend, Mita Das, she is a good translator. She wants to translate these poems into Bangla. Do you give permission? Bangla is a Rabindna Tagore's language. She is a fantastic translator. Yes. Yes. I do, I do. Uh, uh, Mita, uh, he is agree. So uh, she is a very good fantastic translator and uh, she is a part of uh, uh, Kritya also. Okay. Uh, so uh, there are many poems I want to uh, read about this Modi Alini, uh, the snacks and all, but uh, which language, which poem do you want to read? Bonard or which poem you want to read? Bonard. Bonard, okay. Uh, so you want to read, no, first? Yes. Please. So this is uh, a poem then about uh, painting and uh, as i uh, uh, was telling my brother was uh, was a sculpture maker and uh, the visual arts have always been very important and, and very much inspiration for me so this uh, bonard is a painter that i love very much and he is uh, has a very special uh, feeling for the light Bonard. Iris och lilje och kvällens kvinnliga linjer in den öppna världs dör. Du strauk penslarna längs henne färgmjuka hu, lys och hår. Ville det och namnge detta precis ta bort det unika med det och sjå världen. Böja sig framöver i det blå. Bore er dekka, marte bader, kvila hovudet i hanna. Katten strekker seg etter gode angre. På tal sier at poesien åpner og lukker ei dør og let de som ser gjennom ho gjette hva de så. Er det en katt utkledd som kvinne i et rom, utkledd som solskinn? Det jeg kan si er et fremleis levende farvel, en koloristisk plantemusikk, en magisk morgenmelankoli, en rytme av kveldslys fanget opp av en bordduk. Dine lys velsigner lærrett gjennom strømmer hverdagens heilage mål. Og dagen, dagens badekar, solkjærteikne kropper og kokekar, ei kaffekvern som ikon. Fergeforstand og lysintuisjon fremfor de nakne fergene og bonner. Ein bukett morgen. Du så ei ung kvinne gå av ein trollibus og følgte 
lite henne till en liten butik där hon arbetade med händerna och bar henne vart modell för berg. Måla henne om och om igen och kropparna filtrar sig in i varandra. Liva dyker filtrar sig in i varandra. Du bar henne vart di hone. Och en dag överhörde du en samtal mellan köparen och säljaren av ett trä som du var dag hade hälsa med glädje. Nu skulle det hockas och säljas. Du gick bort till de två männen och tillbau säljaren mer pengar än köparen kunde la säljaren få och tre fick stå. Och bona Iris och linjer och kvällens kvinnliga konturer in den öppna veranda dörr. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think that uh, the English translation which was given to me was shorter one than your <laughs> original. <laughs> Or maybe the Norwegian language is little, uh, is a long, uh, sounds are a little longer. So then Hindi, I feel that uh, the, I use, uh, it, it is not so long. No. Uh, uh -huh. तो ये जो बोनाट कविता आई एम जस्ट एक्सप्लेनिंग टू माय ऑडियंस कि बोनाट कविता है वो एक फ्रेंच पेंटर कलाकार है पेरे बोनाट उन पर लिखी है और उनकी पत्नी का नाम मार्थे था जो बोनाट की मॉडल थी और बाद में उनकी पत्नी बन गई बोनाट का टाइम था 1867 टू 1947 सो दिस पोएम इज रिटन for a painter and by painting it is a he is talking many things he is not talking about the bonnard but he is maybe his paintings uh, he is uh, bringing his painting in the, into the life so this itself is a very interesting in this poetry i like that uh, because in kritya festival we have a special session you can see that painting behind me uh, this is uh, made on kritya on wall when some poet was uh, was a uh, uh, reading his poetry, the painter was painting this, and he made painted it in five minutes, ten minutes, ten fifteen minutes. So that uh, uh, poetry and painting uh, uh, is a very interesting thing. And then you bought both things together so beautifully. So I am reading in Hindi. Bonard, Bonard, dunya ke khule darwaje par iris, lily, or goduli ki nari surab rekhain. तुम उसकी कोमल त्वचा की दमक और बालों पर अपनी तुलिका फिराते हुए एक विचित्र नजरिए से नाम देते हो दुनिया नीलाब की ओर झुकती है मेज सजी है मारते स्नान करती हुई उसका सिर एक हाथ पर टिका है बिल्ली खुशबू की ओर अंगड़ाई ले रही है काल का कहना है कविता बंद दरवाजे को खोलती है और लोगों को वह देखने देती है जो वो देखना चाहते हैं क्या बिल्ली औरत के वेश में रोशनी से सजी है जो मैं कहना चाहता हूं एक अनवरत जीवित विदा एक एक कोलोरिस्टिक की जीवित पेंटिंग में उगते पौधे जादुई प्रातःकालीन उदासी संध्या की रोशनी की लय को थामे हुए मेज पोष तुम्हारी रोशनी से अनुग्रहित कैनवास प्रतिदिन दिव्य भोजन पाता है दिवस के नहान कुंड सूरज द्वारा सहलाई हुई देहें मनमोहकताएं कॉफी बनाने की मशीन प्रतीक के रूप में रंगीन बौद्धिकता और कोमल अंतर्ज्ञान नग्न रंगों को देख रहे हैं ओ पोनाट सुबह का गुलदस्ता तुम एक स्त्री को ट्रॉली पर ट्रॉली बस से उतरते देखते हो और पीछा करते हो उस वस्त्र की दुकान तक जहां वह कशीदा कारी करती है फिर तुम उससे मॉडल बनने को कहते हो तुम उसे तस्वीर पर उतारते हो बार बार तुम्हारी देह में देह एक दूसरे में छन जाती है एक दूसरे में छन जाती है ब्यूटीफुल लाइन तुम्हारी जिंदगी एक दूसरे में छन जाती है तुम उसे अपनी पत्नी बनाना चाहते हो एक दिन तुम एक पेड़ 
जिसका प्रतिदिन अभिवादन करते रहे कि खरीदार और बेचने वाले का संवाद सुनते हो कि अब इसे काटा जाना चाहिए और फिर बेचा जाना चाहिए तुम बेचने वाले के पास जाते हो बेचने वाले को खरीदार से ज्यादा रकम देने का वायदा करते हो जिससे पेड़ बच जाए वो बोनार आयरिस और रेखाएं और गोदीली की नारी परिरूप खुले आंगन के द्वार पर सच ए ब्यूटीफुल पोएम which talks about bonard which talk about that love love that this the uh, mingling with each other means actually this is i do not remember what was written in uh, english at that time but uh, in in hindi also it, it gives a very what you say that those lines those words give a kind of uh, very beautiful feeling so yeah. thank you very much for this poem Uh, the, a poet is writing not about a painter writing about the uh, that how a painter and his model gets absorb in each other mm. they are actually ex- they they have exchange in each other yes so and, it's a beautiful and, uh, one. Mm. yes again i i think uh, if we if we think back to uh, what i talked about um, the poems in the hospital the night poems where i wanted the room and the music and the landscape outside to to become a whole uh, it, it's a, something of the same here that the painter the model the garden and the sunshine everything mixes and becomes yes what it is what it is So do you want to say something else Yes I want you Robert. I want to, to learn you one word in my language Tell me uh, it's the word that you have been using very much when you talked about what you had to to uh, that you had to get soft when you should translate my poems so I want you to try to say the word soft in my dialect and it, it is muk muk yes muk 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 that's yes. <laughs> muk thank you very much i <laughs> 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 we could learn before itself but this is the beauty of pandemic also because i um, many friends came to my stage and i thought that i am learning by this talk Uh, uh, to uh, uh, and i am more communicating in these talk prithya talk to them and i am learning a lot every talk i am learning something yuk so i will not forget now <laughs> so thanks a lot uh, uh, it's a so beautiful so rhythmic so soft uh, this session and uh, i i am sure that everyone your poems are ready uh, to be translated into bangla and uh, some uh, these are the young people ha huh? yeah they will yeah. she will translate and young people yeah. they are also feeling entering in such kind of softness uh, and that's what i wanted to bring here that uh, we forgot about write, uh, writing poetry on nature by involving ourselves in it uh, you cannot keep nature as a model you have to as the bonard and martha mixed in each other then only his painting became a real painting exactly he yeah, the martha was not a model they both were actually um, emotionally and spiritually exchange in yeah. each other so that is the thing do you want to say something at last i want to say thank you very much for having me here <laughs> it's been a pleasure and it has been uh, Uh, a very nice talk i have a feeling that we have been talking about essential things yeah thank you very much thanks a lot so uh, it was nice very nice 